She truly is the goat. She is Dame Dolly Parton. Good morning, Dolly. <laughs> How are you? Great, how are you? Doing good. I'm just over here trying to sell all my things. <laughs> my rock star album. Oh, Dolly, we love you so much. You've had so much excitement, so many texts about you. You've been counting down to this moment for the last month. Um, so this album, Rockstar, from Frockstar to Rockstar, it has landed, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls. Did you feel obliged to record this album because of the induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Which Was it the chicken or the egg? Which came first? Uh, well, the chicken and the egg kind of came at the same time. <laughs> Actually, when I got inducted, I thought, well, I have to earn this title because I didn't really feel like I had earned the right to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But I had always kind of wanted to do a rock album. My husband's a huge rock and roll fan. So it just all seemed to, the timing just seemed to be perfect. And I'm so proud of, of this. I think it's some of the best work I've ever done. And certainly I'm singing with some of the greatest people of all time. Yeah, I mean, you're still more than firing at all cylinders. And a 30-track offer as well. Real VFM, real value for money. Um, you, you, Nobody does it like Dolly. Nobody in the world. When did you start making the phone calls to your musical pal geniuses? Um, and who was the first one you phoned up? Well, actually, I met a lot of the people that got inducted into the Hall of Fame the same night I did. And I got to perform with, for instance, like Rob Halford, uh, you know, from Judas Priest, he was on the show that night. We got a chance to talk, and I said, I'm going to do a rock album. Would you join me? He said, I would be honored to do it. And same with the, with Pat Benatar and some of the others that actually went in the Hall of Fame. She and her husband uh, went in the same night to the Hall of Fame. And so some of them I met there, and the few that I called, they all were so gracious and so nice. And I'm so glad because I hate to ask anybody to do <laughs> I'm always more than willing to do it myself, but everyone I called, uh, they said uh, they acted like they would be proud to do it. So I'm just so honored that we have the great people like Elton John and uh, Paul McCartney, Ringo playing drums on Let It Be, which is one of my favorites. So all the people that I asked were more than glad to do it. Some of them even called to say, hey, are you really doing a rock album? Let me be on it. So it worked out really well. So cool. I mean, the names, the, the list just goes on and on and on. Chris Stapleton, Miley Cyrus, Peter Frampton, Melissa Everidge, Elton John, like you say, uh, Cheryl Crow and Michael McDonald. And and so, so I mean, it's you know, it is in itself. Uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, your album. The uh, the song we've been playing for a while now, World on Fire, is just glorious, Dolly. You know, we've played it to guests that have been in here. You know some of the names of the people that we played it to. I said, have you heard the new Dolly Parton single? And they hadn't, so we played it to them. And they said, oh, my God, <laughs> she's got it all going on. Tell us about that song. Tell us about how you put it together. Tell us what you wanted from it, because it's all in there, even the kitchen sink. Huh, well, I, that song really does have a true story. You had mentioned earlier that I did 30 songs on the album. I wanted to do everything I ever loved. I wanted to do songs my husband uh, loved. And so I thought, well, I want to leave this for my legacy. So years and years from now, after I'm gone, they can do compilations of all these songs through the years. And so uh, I had finished the song, Kent Wells, who produced the album. Uh, he said, we've got to stop now. <laughs> we got about, you know, 29 songs here or, you know, somewhere in that. He said, we got to stop. No more sessions. I said, fine. I agree. We got plenty of songs. So I go home that very night and I just kind of get I just wake up in the middle of the night for no reason. And I started writing the song World on Fire and I felt like that I was being kind of called to do something to speak to the world and that on that particular song. So I got up, wrote the song. Next morning, I called Kent. I said, we have to call another session. He said, oh, it's going to have to be really good. I said, well, I think it is. So I said, I'll be right down. And I sang it to him. And he said, yep, we got to call another session. So that's how that one turned out. I just felt led to do it. And it's, it's, it's been a real favourite of a lot of people. I love it. It's got, it's got everything going. It's got all the tricks in there. It's got the anthemic chorus. It's got the hand clapping. It's got the breaks. It's got the almost got a rap in the middle of it. It's it's uh, it's fantastic, Dolly. Is what it is. How do you do it all, Dolly? How do you organise and manage and maintain such a big, deep, and glorious and, and rich and golden world? How can you give the rest of us some tips, please? 
Yes, well, I am blessed with a lot of wonderful people in all the departments <laughs> that I work in. I've always asked God to bless me and surround me with all the right people, and he has. And I, I can't take all the credit. I can, I can just show up and do my part, and I do my part, but so do they. So I'm surrounded with wonderful people in every aspect of my life and my career. No, I get that, and I knew you were going to say that because that's typical you. But you do have to lead from the front. How do you do that? What what qualities do you do you recognize and appreciate in other leaders? And what what how, what do you deploy yourself? Well, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your talent. You, you have to truly believe that you can do that thing that it is you want to do. And I'm a very spiritual based person, and I kind of call on that you know that great great spirit that's greater than me or that higher wisdom, whatever you want to call it. And so I just ask to be guided and led into whatever talent I feel that God has given me. I want to try to make the very most of it. And I'm just a curious person. I just want to see what all I can do in my life. That's great advice. I mean, staying curious for me is one of the big things. Just, you know, don't fear things. Um, don't don't brush things off. Don't be conflicted. Don't suspect things. Just get curious about everything because that is the route, I think, to 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 overcoming things and enjoying things and, and getting the most out of life on a daily basis. How much do you sleep? What is your regime like, your energy regime? Well, I actually don't require a lot of sleep, and that's really... Uh, why I've done so well in my life, but I'm also a very early riser. No matter what time I go to bed, whether it's late or early, and usually it's early. You know that old saying, uh, you know, early to bed, early to rise, yeah. make sure you're wealthy and wise. I don't know how wise I am, but it's helped me in my career because I'm up working when most people are asleep. I love that time of the morning when all these world's energy kind of going to work and I feel like I have a clear channel. So I don't require a lot of sleep, and the older I get, the less sleep I seem to need. <laughs> but I, it seems to all work for me. It works for you, and you're so inspirational. You're infectious, Dolly Parton, is what you are. Um, we've got so many questions to ask you. So many listeners want to ask you questions. So let's go through a few of those, shall we? Uh, big Dolly fan here. Already have two copies of her new album on pre-order. I've always wondered which she wrote first. Was it Jolene um, or I Will Always Love You? And did you really write them on the same day? Well, I don't know that I wrote them on the same day, but they are on the same cassette because uh, I was, I'm always writing songs. I always keep my cassette handy and available, but they actually wound up on the same Jolene album. Uh, and so that in itself is a feat, but I really wrote them within in the same period of time, either that week. And since I wrote, since I write all the time, something almost every day, I've always kind of believed that they very well could have been on the same day that I wrote them because they were back to back on the cassette. Beautiful. Ashley in Eastbourne says, although you're retiring from touring, Dolly, will you do any more one-off shows in the UK? Well, I don't know how many. I'm not going on tour anymore, not in the near future. Never say never, as they say. But I'll never retire. But the touring is a little... Uh, too much for me now because you have to spend at least six months preparing for a tour and in order for it to make the money that you hope it will you got to commit yourself to a year and a half you know or so of a show and i'm just not willing to do that anymore but i will continue to do special shows like a long weekend and i'd like to maybe do some shows you know to be here. got um, it two is that what you call it <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll call it anything you like. Um, talking of cash, I... So I'll probably do some more shows, but not not touring. All right. Lorna says, um, I visited Pigeon Forge in 2018 and was told by a local that during the forest fires in the Smokies, a community lost their homes and Dolly came to their financial aid and paid them um, a little stipend per month until their houses were rebuilt. Can you ask her about this? Do you want to talk about that? Uh, do you feel comfortable talking about that, Dolly? Are you talking? Uh, yeah, you're talking so fast, and you really do have this accent. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to. I want to get as many questions in as possible. <laughs> Yeah, would you ask me that again a little slower? Okay, sorry. Lorna says, I visited Pigeon Forge in 2018. Oh, okay, I thought what you're talking about now. I just sorry. Didn't sorry, Dolly. That's when we actually, when Gatlinburg, one of our beautiful cities, one of our famous towns in, in Tennessee, uh, caught on fire. And yes, we did try, we did a big 
of Telethon, where we had all the wonderful artists that were willing to devote their time and energy to raise money to help rebuild that. And I'm I'm always proud to be part of anything that can help out people in you know in uh, in need. I think when you're in a position to help, you should help when you can. Yeah. Okay, great. Cool. Um, I'm going to speak slower now. I'm going to get more. I'm too excited, Dolly. That's the thing. Um, How is the Imagination Library going? And for people who don't know what that is, can you tell them what it is? I will. Uh, The Imagination Library is my literacy program. It's the the, uh, cause dearest to my heart as far as my charity work. It's where we give books to children once a month from the time they're born until they start school. And so far, that started back uh, 20, 25, 26 years ago. Uh, I've kind of based it on the fact that a lot of my relatives being mountain people, poor people having to work for a living, being back in rural areas, didn't get a chance to go to school. And my own father couldn't read and write, but he was the smartest person I've ever known. And I have my dad's work ethic. But I started this program just in our home county and it just caught on, and now we're all over the world, and we have given away over 200 million books since we started. So I'm very proud to be able to put that many books in the hands of that many children. That's pretty cool. Let's combine those um, aspects in this next question. Haley says from Essex, lifelong Dolly fan, Dear Dolly, if you could provide one piece of inspirational advice for my daughter, Minnie, who's eight and was recently diagnosed with autism and is struggling with life a bit at the moment, she'll be so happy. She adores you and even dressed up as you on World Book Day this year. Oh, well, that's precious and that's wonderful. I think we all have our gifts, no matter how we're born or all the things that, you know, that we might be dealt in life. There's always greatness in every single person. So always just kind of embrace that. And I'm very flattered and honored that she would love me enough and that I've inspired her enough to dress up like me. That's pretty <laughs> cool. a lot of hair, so uh, patty, and put you on a big smile and have a good attitude. That's the best. <laughs> um, have you heard this story today in the papers, Dolly? Irish town gathers over 1,100 Dolly Parton impersonators for a world record. Have you seen this story? I did see that just <laughs> as I was on my way uh, from the airport back, uh, to the hotel here in London. Uh, I saw that and I thought, wow, that's quite a compliment. I mean, $1,000. And I saw a picture of some of them and they kind of looked like I have over the years. <laughs> <laughs> All the different looks kind of like we have in my new book. It's called My Life in Rhinestones Behind the Seams. And I was looking at their pictures and I thought, wow, some of them kind of look like I have and at different times in my life. But I was very flattered and honored about that. So cool. Uh, Behind the Seams, My Life in Rhinestones is out on October the 17th. The album is out exactly a month later. Rockstar is out on Friday the 17th of November. We've all been um, uh, uh, bewitched by this amazing documentary with Arnold Schwarzenegger on Netflix called Arnold, starring Arnold himself, three one hours. It's brilliant. I don't know if you've seen it. Have you ever been asked or tempted to do anything like that? To do uh, something like what? So Arnold Schwarzenegger has this amazing documentary on Netflix just now. It's three oh. one hours of his life. It's brilliant, Dolly. You should watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, have you, Would you do anything like that? Oh, sure. I hope to do a a documentary on on my life. I think those are wonderful. I'm actually in the middle of doing a Broadway musical of my life, which I've been trying to do for 15, 20 years now. But pretty soon I'm going to be able to do that, which tells a great deal of my life. And I've done different uh, documentaries, many documentaries, but someday I would like to do a complete story of my life and document all the things that I have done and have it done in documentary style, I mean. I would love that. And the way they're making these, this is, I call it it's like a super TV now, isn't it? Netflix are making television shows, but they're making them like movies. I would love to see that to do with you. I would, it'd be so insp- inspirational. People would love that. So please, 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 I beg you, make. if I could have one wish, Dolly, I would wish for that. Um, Rita from Somerset says, I would like to ask Dolly if she ever goes out without her wig on to not get recognized? Do you ever do that? Do you ever sneak out? 
Oh, well, of course, I don't always wear wigs. They're just so <laughs> very, very handy for me. I do have blonde hair, and I do try to keep it pretty much the same length and pull it up in little scrunchies and all that. So, yeah, I'm off in luck with my husband when we go out riding around in our little RV, our recreational van. Uh, I'm always, you know, I'm not so made up. But I'm not going to go out in public, like if I go shopping or something. I think if people see me, they expect me to look like the dolly they know. I love it. <laughs> so like, if you want to be a star, you need to look like one. <laughs> Great. Uh, right, more, more, more. I know we've not got long left, so so here's some more. Um, I would love to know, says Marie in Shrewsbury, the first moment you can remember standing your ground and and letting the world know it was your way or the highway? Well, I've always kind of been opinionated. I guess that started even back when I was little, when I decided I wanted to wear makeup and to look, you know, cheaper than I was supposed to be looking at that time. I was influenced by the town tramp in our town because she had all the bright red lipstick, all the piled up yellow hair, long nails, and tight skirts, and I thought, wow, that's how I want to look. And when they used to say she was trash, in my young mind, I thought, that's what I'm going to be when I grow up. So I used to get in trouble wearing makeup and tight clothes, especially with my grandpa, who was a preacher. And I always tell the story that grandpa telling me, trying to get me to get all the makeup off, saying, don't you want to go to heaven? I said, yeah, but do I have to look like hell to get there? <laughs> so I was standing my ground even then. <laughs> but I, uh, you know, I got a little trouble with those kind of things. But I just always knew who I was. And, and I just try to, I just go with what I believe, what I think I can do according to my personal rules. I just have a great relationship with God and a great relationship with myself. And I try to keep, you know, keep that in check and keep that in line and not to drift too far from the shore. As yeah. this. No, I get it. I get it. Um, so Mira, our lovely, our beautiful, our wonderful, our unbelievably mega exec producer is going on her honeymoon across America. She's starting in Texas, Austin, Texas. She's going up to New York. She's going via Nashville and New Orleans. And the day before she leaves, she's going to Dollywood. She's going to stay. She's going to overnight in Knoxville. And she wants, she wants recommendations, killer hacks for Dollywood, a trip, a day trip to Dollywood. And she wants them from actual Dolly Parton. Come on, Dolly, be the ultimate tour guide. Well, I tell you what, if you go to Dollywood, uh, I would be honored and proud. And I go there often. I don't know exactly when she's there, but I might uh, be on the grounds that day myself. But if not, we have the greatest host ever at Dollywood. We, we really have a family-oriented park. It's a beautiful park. People take such good care of all the guests. And there's something for everybody uh, at Dollywood. So hopefully they'll have a wonderful, wonderful time. And so just let us know what your, I'd be curious to know what your, what her thoughts are after she does. <laughs> I'm sure she's going to love it. Um, Dolly, one more question for you. On Dollywood again, can you remember the first time and where you were over the kitchen table or out riding or something when somebody or you, yourself came up with the word Dollywood? When was the first seed of Dollywood planted? Where were you? How did it happen? Well, I happened to be in Hollywood. I was always looking up and everybody comes to, to Hollywood and they want to go to have their picture made at the Hollywood sign up in the hills. And so I remember the first time that I went to Hollywood, I was always, I was just beginning my career, didn't know if it would go as well as I'd always dreamed and hoped. But I looked up at that sign and I thought, well, if I ever do have a theme park, which I'd always thought if, if I made it, I would love to go back home and do something great like that. And so I thought if I ever do have that park that I'm thinking of, I'm going to call it Dollywood. Why not? I just replaced that H with a D. And so that's where that idea came from. Simple as that. Dolly Parton, you are a legend. I love you. We all love you. We've had nothing but love for you since we announced you were coming on a few weeks ago. Is there any one passing thought you'd like to leave us with today? Well, I would just like to say to all the people out there listening to you and watching you, 
Um, well, I want to say thank you above all for allowing me to do all the things I've done through the years. And I worked really hard on this uh, rock album because I wanted people to know that if I was going to do something, I was going to give it my very, very best. So it's I think it's some of the best work I've ever done. And I just really hope that people are going to enjoy the record. Thank you, Dolly Parton. There she goes, everybody. The one, the only Woo! queen of country, Dolly Parton. Thank you. Thank you, Dolly. Thank you.